More Than a Necklace by Chelsea Silviger. There is a famous quote from an unknown source that reads, For me, jewelry is a way of keeping memories alive. While I do not consider myself a materialistic person, there is, however, one highly coveted object in my possession that serves as both a family heirloom and an accessory. Around my neck hangs a simple, thin, gold chain adorned with three gold charms. Unlike most store-bought necklaces, the delicate gold chain I regularly wear around my neck is one of a kind. While some stores may carry the same chain, and similar, if not identical, charms, the process of acquiring each gold amulet and their addition to my favorite accessory makes this necklace entirely unique. Now before I begin the story of how I came to acquire my necklace, it is important that you understand the three women who were responsible for gifting it to me. My grandmother, Elaine, my mom, Sherry, and my great-grandmother, Jean. Let me begin with the story of my great-grandmother. Grandma Jean was one of seven children born to Harry and Rose Blank. Originally from Russia, Harry and Rose immigrated to Canada shortly after meeting each other. After multiple years living together in Montreal, Canada, Harry and Rose moved to Cleveland, Ohio, where they started a family. In November of 1912, their third child, Jean, my great-grandmother, was born. With the addition of Jean to the family, Charlie and Rose had more mouths to feed and work in America at the time was hard for Charlie to come by. Together, Rose and Charlie moved their growing family to Montreal in order for Charlie to return to his old job as a tailor. Ten years after moving back to Canada, Charlie and Rose decided to return permanently to the States. Having saved enough money, Charlie opened up his very own tailor shop in Cleveland, Ohio while Rose stayed at home to care for their seven children. Harry's tailor shop provided the family with a sustainable income. However, they were in no means wealthy. Feeding nine mouths was often a difficult task. Given their lack of finances and the Great Depression, which began in 1930, Jean's family could not afford to send her to college. Instead, after graduating from high school, she began looking for a husband. At the time, family and friends were often involved in one's search for a spouse. In fact, Harry's close friend, Sammy Berkowitz, who like him was a hard-working Jewish immigrant, played a vital role in finding his daughter Jean the perfect match. Given his occupation as the Jewish undertaker, Sammy considered it his duty to compensate for the death of a townsperson with the procreation of future generations. When Harry approached him, with news that his daughter Jean was about to graduate from high school, Sammy assumed his alternate role as matchmaker and began the search to find Jean, who was like a niece to him, the perfect match. It did not take long before Sammy introduced Jean to her future husband, Charlie Gutman. Having lived in the same duplex as Mr. Gutman and his three children, Sammy became close with his middle son, Charlie. Charlie, whose mother died of diphtheria when he was only six, took responsibility for his younger sister and worked hard to support his family doing whatever job he could. Considering Charlie's hardworking and responsible demeanor, Mr. Berkowitz took it upon himself to introduce the ambitious 20-year-old Charlie Gutman to his dear friend's daughter, my great-grandmother, Jean. Just as Sammy Berkowitz predicted, the two hit it off. After dating for five years, what Charlie considered to be an eternity, Jean finally agreed to marry him. Together, the couple moved into a small duplex located in downtown Cleveland. Shortly after they wed, Jean became pregnant. On May 24, 1935, the couple's first child, Elaine Gutman, my grandmother, was born. While Jean, like her mother, was a housewife, Charlie began working as a manufacturing representative. Over time, Charlie was able to work his way up the corporate ladder and provide his family with an upper middle class lifestyle. Together, Jean and Charlie raised my grandmother and her sister, who was born in 1940, in Shaker Heights, Ohio. Given Charlie's successful career, both Elaine and her sister were able to attend college. In 1954, my grandmother, 
began what would become two years of a higher education at The Ohio State University. While there, she met and began dating Eugene Heyman, who was enrolled in dental school at the time. In 1956, having only completed her sophomore year of college, Elaine married Eugene. Together, the couple moved to Illinois, where Eugene was stationed while serving as a dentist in the Navy. In 1958, the couple had their first child, prompting them to move back to Ohio. The move back to Ohio allowed Elaine to raise their child with the help of her mother and father. Only one year after the birth of their first child, Vicki, my mom, Sherry, was born. While Elaine stayed home to care for the children, my grandfather opened up his own dental practice. Eugene's private practice allowed him to provide for his family and put my mother through both college and law school. After graduating from Ohio State University in 1981, my mom enrolled in law school at Ohio Northern. After successfully graduating from law school and passing the LSTATs, my mom moved to New York City. Unlike her mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother, my mother not only completed a higher level of education, but she began a life for herself outside of Ohio. While living in New York City, Sherry met and began dating David Silviger, who, like her, was a lawyer. After getting married in 1991, the couple, my parents, moved to Baltimore, Maryland. Both of my parents worked as lawyers, allowing them to generate enough income to support a family. In 1995, after many years spent trying to conceive, my mom got pregnant with me. Unfortunately, my great-grandma Jean died 12 years before my birth, so I never had the chance to meet her. However, in the Jewish religion, children are named after the dead. My mom, who had grown up with both her mother and grandmother, found it only fitting to honor her Grandma Jean's memory by naming her daughter, me, after her. It is because of my great Grandma Jean that my middle name is Jay. Considering the very different lifestyles that my great grandmother, grandmother, and mother lived, it may not surprise you to know that while they share the same DNA, they are three completely unique women. As I mentioned before, the story of my most coveted piece of jewelry, a necklace with three unique gold charms, would not be valued as highly as it is had I not taken the time to understand and learn about the three women who together composed it. My desire to learn more about the three generations of women who came before me began the day I received a package from my grandmother, who I often refer to as Mammy, for my 12th birthday. Without any hesitation, I began prying open a cardboard FedEx box containing a ribbon-wrapped gift box. Inside the box, nestled in a cocoon of fluffy cotton, was a golden one-inch palm-shaped charm known as a hamsa. Within seconds, it was fastened around my neck and I was phoning Mammy to thank her for the present. She explained to me that... A homset is more than just an ornate silhouette of a hand. It is a talisman symbolizing the hand of God, which is believed to protect those who wear it. After observing the close bond that her daughter, my mother, was capable of maintaining with her grandmother, because they lived very close to each other, my grandmother took it upon herself to do whatever she could to form a similar bond with me, even though we are geographically separated. The gentle swaying of the Hamza moving around my neck constantly reminds me that regardless of distance, my grandmother is always protecting me. Although I am obsessed with the Hamza charm and its power, my necklace would not feel like my own if it weren't for a very special birthday present. For my 15th birthday, my mom presented me with a brand new gold dime-sized disc charm engraved with a capital letter C. The addition of the initial charm transformed my necklace in multiple ways. It not only personalized my Hamza, dutifully protecting me, the individual represented by the initial C, but it also gave a voice to the necklace. Prior to its addition, the Hamza rested slightly under my chin, but now, every time I walk or move, I am greeted with the faint chime of the charms, lightly tapping into each other. The sea, 
just as the Hamza had done three years before, provided me with the perfect opportunity to learn more about my loved ones. Unlike my grandmother and great-grandmother, who spent most of their lives in Ohio, and who primarily and whose primary occupation involved caring for the home, my mom led a significantly different lifestyle. Considering the decisions that my mom made, such as going to law school, moving to New York City, and raising a family outside of Ohio, it is only fitting that she would gift me with a new charm that is uniquely my own. Despite my love for the two charms, it was not until the summer following my junior year of high school that the necklace was finally complete. That July, I decided to spend a week in Ohio visiting my grandmother. It was there that my grandmother presented me with a gold letter J charm. Unlike the C that my mom had bought me, the J did not come in a store gift box, but was secured in a satin zip pouch that once belonged to my great-grandmother. Mammy lovingly told me that the charm belonged to her mother, Jean, and she wanted me to wear it and enjoy it just as her mother had done. Like Grandma Jean, the cursive J is old-fashioned. The graceful way in which the gold letter loops and curls around in many ways mirrors the dainty, humble, and gentle person that my great-grandma Jean was. While I never had the opportunity to meet her, I grew up learning about her from the two women who knew her best, my mother and grandmother. My necklace is more than just a fashion statement. It is a gift from three generations of women in my family. My great-grandmother Jean, whose name and memory I continue to honor. My grandmother, who continues to protect me from many miles away. And my mom, who understands the need to be an individual. It is because of them that I can honestly say and mean. For me, jewelry is a way of keeping memories alive.